a little bit about the sample prep and the workflow for real-time PCR. Now this is going to differ a little bit depending on what your actual application is, but for the most part I have tried to streamline it in such a way that it makes sense to everybody. You will start off by extracting a target nucleic acid. It will either be genomic DNA typically or total RNA. And this is going to be your unknown. This is what you want to measure. And, you know, I've said that real-time PCR is a highly quantitative and it's a highly powerful technique, but it's only going to give you high-quality data if you use high-quality material. So it's really imperative to carry out some quality control on your material. And this can be done in a variety of ways. So for DNA and total RNA, you can look at the uh, absorbance at 260 and 280 nanometers, and you can get the ratio of those two absorbances. Um, and that will give you an indication on the purity of the nucleic acid you're using. I also like to run my nucleic acids on an agarose gel. So if I'm looking at genomic DNA, I like to see it as a large chunky band at the top of the gel with not, not too much smearing. You will always get a little smearing, but if you see something that's smeared the whole way through the gel, it's degraded and I wouldn't use it. For RNA, you're looking for the evidence of a large and a small subunit and they should be very very clear on a gel with the large subunit approximately twice as intense as the small subunit and if, if all looks good here then you can proceed to the next step and the processing of the sample will be will be very different from from one uh, field of research to the other but generally speaking processing could involve such things like cleaning up uh, extraction reagents if necessary so Nowadays, there's a kit for everything, it seems. But if you are trying to isolate nucleic acids from a, a biopsy, brain tissue, then maybe you have to go to more, uh, I don't know, old-fashioned methods where you might need to use organic solvents. And these organic solvents, they can, be, uh, they can be tricky in downstream reactions, so you might want to get rid of those. Again, you can buy cleanup kits to do that. Um, if you want to analyze gene expression and you have isolated total RNA, then it's a very good idea to carry out a DNA treatment to remove uh, contaminating genomic DNA. And no matter how good the RNA prep kit is, there will always be some genomic DNA left. And you don't want to be amplifying genomic DNA. Um, and then if it's, uh, if it's gene expression you're going after, you will then reverse transcribe this RNA to cDNA using a reverse transcriptase protocol. Then you have the sample in hand, you're ready to go, and then you need to start thinking about assay design and optimization of your assay. So you will need to choose the label, as we talked about earlier, will it be cyber green or will it be a probe? Design your primers, um, choose your quantification method, and optimize your PCR. I have simplified this, but there are, many, there are many steps involved in here, and some of them we will expand on in the coming slides. And then at the end, if everything has been optimized and everything is ready to go, then it's as simple as running the PCR and getting your data. You will run your PCR on the instrument, you will analyze your data, and if you are running with CyberGreen, you will perform this very important post-run melting curve. To view the full video of this and all of our other webinars for bioscientists at the bench, please visit bitesizebio.com slash webinars.